Hi everyone, welcome to All City Homestead. Kim here. So today's video is all about pomegranates. My sheep do make an appearance, <laughs> but really it's about pomegranates. And if you stay tuned to the end, I will tell you how to make this wonderful, delicious, simple pomegranate spritzer. It only has three ingredients and the first one came out of my orchard on my pomegranate tree where I'm going to take you now. So good. <laughs> Clearly the wind is not letting up, but I thought I would come out here and get the last of the pomegranates off of this tree. <clears throat> so pomegranate trees, for those of you who aren't familiar, are kind of like big bushes. And I have just taken off four there, and there's one more left that I'm going to get now. It's got a short fall, so I'm going to let it fall. There we go. So, pomegranate. Just beautiful. Most of them came off uh, at the end of September, beginning of October. Now it's the end of October. There's only a few left. And, um, in fact, one of the ones down there, the biggest one down there, um, the bottom of it is starting to rot, I guess you'd say. So it's black. And you might think you have to throw that away, but actually cut that little segment off. Most of this is still going to be really good. But I should have had these off like, um, uh, you know, like a couple weeks ago. <laughs> but I just put it off. But um, this one's perfect and all the other ones were perfect. A little small because they were like the second uh, go round uh, of pomegranates. They came on after the main ones did. Anyway, I'm going to make a nice pomegranate spritzer with them, which is really simple to make. This is toffee, by the way, enjoying some olive leaves. And this is Coco. Hi, Coco. I threw Coco some dry weeds from this cage. I'm within a cage within my orchard. So I'll back up a little bit so you can see it. So I have this cage, which is about six feet by eight feet around my pomegranate tree and that's because um, the boys here Coco and Toffee would definitely eat this pomegranate tree to the ground if they were allowed to <laughs> so I have a cage with a little gate on it and that works well I have a couple more in the other half of the orchard where I have um, a couple of nectarine trees as well as uh, a couple of almond trees this is half of my orchard. Um, I have about a hundred olive trees that are between, there's a few new ones that were planted that are only like 30 years old, but most of them are between 80 and a hundred years old. And um, so they're fenced off. And outside of my uh, northern olive orchard here it are my, is my fruit orchard. Um, and I have about 60 fruit trees. Well, 50 fruit trees and maybe eight or 10 nut trees. Anyway, the boys here do a good job keeping all the suckers eaten and as well as any, I bring them from my south orchard. And now I'm gonna go take these in and I will show you how to open one really quickly and easily and also give you the simple recipe for a pomegranate spritzer, which are delicious. Easy, only, let's see, one, two, three, three ingredients. A simple syrup that you make with sugar and water to your own taste, the pomegranate juice, and a little club soda, or um, you could use um, just, uh, what is that called, carbonated water? I think there's another name for that, but anyway, very simple drink. Of course, you can make it into an alcoholic drink too. Might give you that recipe too, but today I'm just gonna make a nice little pomegranate spritzer. Okay, so this is the one that has the damage on the bottom and we're gonna see how it goes, but I will tell you that a couple of the smaller ones had a little bit of damage, not quite as much as this, but a little bit. And when I cut them open, only a few seeds were affected. This was one of them. And you can see that most of the seeds in it are just perfectly fine. So um, what I'm doing, let me move this over here for now. Let's see. Put that back 
there, put this here. So what I'm doing is I'm putting them in this sieve in a bowl of water um, because that's usually the easiest way that causes the least mess. But as you can see, these really just fall right off. Sometimes you can even just um, peel, push them back on the edges and they fall right out without you even touching them. But otherwise you just gently touch them. You can remove this soft membrane. Sometimes it pulls right out. Um, it's much easier to remove than say orange. Um, what is that stuff inside orange is called? Uh, pith? No, it has a name and I just can't think of it. Anyway, um, now, actually I usually do this part under the water, which you can't really see what I'm doing here, but then you just gently rub on the seeds and they come right out. And that way, um, if there's any juice being given off, it doesn't stain you or anything else. It just goes right in the water. Now we have an empty shell and we have the seeds in here. Now, I've already put aside seeds from some of the previous ones. This is just from that little section. Now I'm going to cut into this damaged one. So, let me move this back. Oh, there's a couple seeds I missed. All right, so basically cutting up a pomegranate, and I, I still have uh, one of the really nice ones here too, we'll do next, in case you know it doesn't go well, because here's the thing, sometimes it goes well, and sometimes it goes not so well, but I've never had a major disaster, and it's always been pretty simple. Sometimes it goes perfect, and it's super quick and easy, and that's nice too. So there's no uh, big secret to this, it's it's really straightforward. You cut off the bottom of the pomegranate or the top. People have different preferences. I usually go for the top. However, with this one, I'll probably do the bottom as well since that's where the damage was. So there's the top. Now, if you get the top off and it's mostly still the membrane, you might go a little deeper just so you can see the seeds, um, or rather so you can see where the segments are because that's the second step. After cutting off the top, I'm, because I didn't go too deep, um, I want to go just a little more because I want to see the segments. So if you cut um, a little too deep and you cut off the top half of your seeds, that's not the end of the world by any means, so don't worry about it. But what you're looking for are the segments. There's generally five of them, and you're just cutting through where they are. And to be honest, with this one, I'm not positive. So, But again, because I'm not going too deep, it's not really going to matter. What you're aiming to do is, after you cut the segments, there you go, break them apart. Now, I was going to cut the bottom off too, I forgot to do that, but you'll see that's the part that's bad and it goes up much farther than it did in the other ones because they only had a little bit of damage. So, I'm going to just cut that section off. Now, some people might throw this whole thing away, but I say that's that's silly because there's a lot of good seeds in here. And I might even go a little overboard in what I throw away and stuff that I don't need to throw away. There's another little section right here that might be bad, but I'm going to rinse it off. I don't think you can see me over here, but I'm just rinsing it off in the sink. And... <laughs> You do it under running water, by the way, like I'm doing right now. A lot of the seeds will just fall off. So what I discovered here is that you have a lot of really good stuff here and just a couple right here on the edge that aren't so great. Now I've made a mess here on the board, this black stuff. I'm gonna um, pause the video and rinse that off real quick. So clean board, in fact, I washed the other side, which was the side I was cutting on and turned it over and we're gonna use this side. I'll disinfect the other side later. But here we have wonderful, beautiful, um, let's get this in focus here, perfectly good pomegranate seeds, as you can tell right there. So yeah, why would we not want to use them? And these are just going to break right off into the water here. I use the sieve so that any little pieces of the membrane that come off with the seeds I can then take out before I crush the seeds for juice or eat the seeds as a snack. There's actually a lot of things you can do with pomegranates. 
um, once you get them seeded and it's actually a very simple process to seed them as you can tell so like I said a lot of people would just throw that pomegranate away that was damaged and I'd say that was a pretty extensively damaged one the most I've ever seen on my tree uh, this is the third year my tree is fruited because um, it's a pretty young tree and I usually get about 40 to 50 pomegranates on it because it's so young probably will increase I guess in future years and um, I've never had a pomegranate that was quite that damaged and again I think that's because I left it on the tree too long and so what happens if you leave it on overly long is it begins to split and then bugs and bacteria get into the split and start causing that decay but again even though about I'd say half of it was damaged uh, that left half the seeds still very good and intact so I'm definitely one that believes in trying to waste as little as possible um, of my fruit now if it was an arduous task to save these then I wouldn't have but as you saw it really wasn't you just I should have actually would have been even easier if I'd cut the bottom off um, as well like I intended to do and that would have made the mess far less so I'm going to finish this up and then we'll cut into the undamaged one and that might be a little easier for you to see the segments which I'd like to show you okay so this is the bottom part of the pomegranate and the top would be where the stem is we're going to cut the top right off I'm going to cut a little deeper even though that there there we go uh, even though that goes into a couple of the seeds I'll just take a few of the bigger ones out and pop them in there okay now here we go we're going to just score right where um, it looks like there are membrane segments <laughs> this one is uh, not as clear I will say that with my experience of I've done this now probably over the last three years 120 times I'd say and usually the segments are more easily defined more easily seen but if they're not I would suggest just going around in making four to eight cuts where you're going in about a half an inch maybe a little less than that and then you're just going to exert a tiny bit of outward pressure and they just break the sections just break off super easily as you can see and you have all these gorgeous <laughs> they're just falling off um, seeds so that's all there is to it so I'm gonna just plop these seeds out rinse them off and then I'll meet you back here and give you the simple recipe so you can make your own pomegranate spritzer with your seeds. So here's the pomegranate juice we ended up with. Isn't it pretty? It made two thirds of a cup. So this is minus the two tablespoons I put in my spritzer, which I still have. Mm. So yeah, two thirds of a cup is a good amount considering what we were working with. I had one real tiny pomegranate. There were, um, what, two small ones, two medium ones, and a large one. Well, not large, largest of the bunch. <laughs> but remember, these were just the final group of pomegranates from a second go around of pomegranate fruiting. Normally, my pomegranates are two or three times as big as the largest one you saw today. Anyway, from that small amount, including two that were damaged and I had to cut away quite a bit of them, two-thirds of a cup of juice is really good. And it was um, very quick to do, actually. After I finished taking the seeds out, which you saw me do, I simply put them in a glass bowl after rinsing them really well with the sieve. And I use a stainless steel one-third measuring cup that has curved sides. And my three middle fingers fit in that real well, and I find that super fast to crush the seeds, which another name, by the way, for pomegranate seeds is arils. Not too many people know that. I wasn't familiar with it till this past year, but now if you ever see it or hear it, you'll know what it's referring to. <laughs> 
You can use a mortar and pestle, of course. I just like to keep mine for my dry herbs. And so, you know, I don't want a chance staining it. I like the look of it. Glass is not going to stain. Um, or at least my clear glass has never stained. And you did notice that when we worked with taking the pomegranate seeds out of the pomegranate by doing it in water, your hands don't get stained and the cutting board doesn't get stained. Um, everything stays nice and clean. And that's that's a good thing. Take my word for it for somebody who's done pomegranates the other way and it looks kind of like a murder scene. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so then after I crushed all those seeds and got my juice, I took the seeds because I like to use everything as much as possible. And I uh, laid them out in my dehydrator, on my different trays of my dehydrator. And um, I'm they're drying right now. They'll take about 12 hours probably on the fruit setting to dry. Now, if you uh, read about drying pomegranate seeds, it's always talking about taking the pomegranate seeds out of the fruit and putting them directly into the dehydrator. And then they can be used as snacks, kind of like raisins or cranberry, dried cranberries. Um, and some people love the crunchiness of the little seed that's in them. And you can also use them for what I intend to use them for, which is tea. But I thought, you know, just because I've crushed these and taken a lot of the juice out doesn't mean they're worthless. There's still juice in them. I didn't crush them to within, you know, a millimeter of their life or anything. There's still juice in them for sure. And, um, you know, I hate to admit it, but I'm one of those people that sometimes will even reuse tea bags. So <laughs> I'm not going to just throw away all these seeds, even in the compost, um, which, you know, they'll do good in the compost and some will come up as trees, but that's another story. Uh, but I laid these out crushed as they were, because I know that once they dry, uh, they will still make great hot pomegranate tea this winter. I might have to use a little more of the dry pomegranates to get as strong a flavor as I want in my hot tea than a recipe might call for with whole dry pomegranates, but that's okay. I'm still getting more use out of them, and I love to use things up. It just makes sense to me, and um, it's very satisfying to me. Speaking of which, here is um, an example of the, the uh, pomegranate, I keep wanting to call them berries. <laughs> they look like berries, sort of. Uh, the pomegranate seeds that were um, the throwaways. So I had a lot of throwaways that came out of the damaged portion of the pomegranates. And most of them, um, you know, went into the compost. But I pulled a few out because what I'm going to do with these, which were not quite good enough to eat, they're a little bit, you know, I, they were close to that black mold stuff. So what they are good for though is making new pomegranate trees because if there's one thing pomegranate seeds do really well, it is sprout into new trees. And unlike a lot of other fruit trees, these are not grafted so they will actually grow into trees that produce the same kind of fruit that I got off of this mother tree. So it's a really simple thing to do. They're one of the easiest plants to grow from seed, a pomegranate tree. So I, you know, I probably don't need that many, <laughs> but of course they're not all going to sprout, but the ones that do, I'll probably plant a few and because they're very decorative as well and they make great gifts, the pomegranates do. And then I'll probably, um, if more, you know, succeed in growing on, I'll probably give them to my dad to sell because he's a retired uh, landscaper and nursery owner and he has connections. I'm sure he'll want to sell them somewhere. So that's something I can always do. Or I can give the little seedlings, the little trees as they grow away as gifts as well. So. It's really a win-win. Um, where is it? Oh, and in cleaning up, I found a few, let me hold one up for you, a few more seeds, which are very good as a snack. I love that um, sweet tart flavor. I was always one of my favorite candies. I wasn't really a candy person as a kid, but sweet tarts, I love. And I think pomegranates have very much have that flavor. So I promise you the recipe for the spritzer. Super simple. It is three ingredients. So it's your pomegranate juice. It is carbonated water, which I'm going to talk about that in just a sec. 
and it is, um, what's the other one? Oh, a simple syrup. So the simple syrup is basically two cups of sugar, white sugar, and two cups of water. And you put the sugar in the water and you slowly heat it up until the sugar is completely dissolved. It just takes a minute or two. It does not need to boil or anything. You're not trying to get it thick syrup like for pancakes or something. You're just making sure that the sugar is completely dissolved. Now, I will say here that I rarely use sugar in anything. Um, like I drink my coffee black and I drink iced tea black and, and, and I'm just not a sugar person other than in certain baking recipes. And even then I only use brown sugar and less of it than it calls for. But um, I will make this simple syrup just for certain drinks, alcoholic and non-alcoholic. But what I'll do, as the recipes tell you to do anyway, is to do it to taste. So in this recipe, for instance, the simple sugar, which I made today, called for you to use, okay, you can write this down, uh, two teaspoons of the simple syrup, okay, two tablespoons of the pomegranate juice, and six ounces of the carbonated water. Now, as far as the water goes, a lot of people are confused about this. I know I was for a long time, but there's naturally carbonated water, which is what I use today in my spritzer, which is labeled usually sparkling water or sparkling mineral water. And that is water that's um, been carbonated naturally. So what is carbonation? It's basically just pressurized carbon dioxide is passing through the water. And it can be done naturally where you'll see that it, um, at natural springs that you go to visit. They have the sparkling water coming up from the ground or it's advertised when you buy sparkling water that they have their mountain springs somewhere. So that's naturally carbonated water. Uh, then you have artificially carbonated water. And so club soda is one of those, but they add to club soda salt in one form or another. And then there is seltzer, which is carbonated water that's it's been artificially carbonated, but nothing's been added to it. And then the last one is tonic water, which has uh, some form of sweetener added to it, usually sugar and quinine. So that's the difference. And you can use whichever you prefer. I use sparkling water, so it's just naturally carbonated water. And I'll tell you another thing for, well, I've had several sips from this drink but this is about what I would drink. I would not drink a big tall glass of it. So that's six ounces that I just gave you and, and those other ingredients, that's would be for a big tall glass or two glasses that are a little bit fuller than this. I have the recipe as far as the sparkling water went and I put three ounces in here, two tablespoons of the pomegranate juice and two teaspoons of the simple syrup. And I like that mixture. But as everyone will tell you, well, every good cook will tell you and every good recipe will tell you, season to taste, well, you need to decide how sweet you want it or how tart you want it. And a lot of that has to do with your particular pomegranates from year to year. You know, sometimes there's a lot sweeter than other times, uh, which would require less. Or perhaps you just don't like sweetness at all. You want a really tart drink. Well, you could cut your uh, simple syrup portion of the recipe in half or even don't use it at all. Try it without any. <laughs> it will be a completely different type of drink. But yeah, I'll put it up on the screen and in the description below how I made it today. I thought it was delicious. And for the hot tea, if you're interested in making the hot tea, then basically you would use three tablespoons of the dry cranberry seeds after they're all done drying. And they'll keep, you know, forever not forever, for a long time after you've dried them, as long as you're sh sure they're thoroughly dry. So three tablespoons of that. And then you would put in like four cups of water to that. Now, because I've done it this way and those seeds are not whole and plump and full of their juice, um, I would probably use four or five tablespoons of the dried seeds to four or five cups of boiling water. But Knowing me, I might actually start with less and see what I think. Because another thing is the longer you steep it, the stronger it's going to be. So it's just something for you to play around with. I'm sure you, if you drink tea, you do that all the time anyway. Um, you know, experiment with what strength you like. And then what they suggest using with it that I'm going to try are throwing in a few cinnamon sticks to add the, just that spicy flavor to it. 
And it's said that a hot pomegranate tea is very good as many teas are in aiding digestion issues and also um, helping to deal with heartburn. I'm fortunate I have never had heartburn, but I do have digestive issues frequently. My stomach is not the best, so I'm definitely going to try out the hot pomegranate tea. But right now, despite the wind that we're still dealing with, it's still quite warm around here. And so this cold, refreshing pomegranate spritzer really hits the spot. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and if you would like to see more videos like this one and others with simple gardening ideas and simple homestead projects and just simple talk between you and me about simple living, then go ahead and hit the subscription button and the notification bell. That way you'll know whenever I upload a new video, which is usually twice a week, maybe a little more. Thanks for joining me today.